Go ahead and open up Audio 101. That's in our Audio Projects folder in our Work folder. And let's talk about not narration, but working with effects on audio. And we'll use my little narration clip down here. If it's not open, expand it. Click this little button right here. And if you don't see the waveform, click the little microphone button. Remember, that changes the view until you do. Now, we do have on here little buttons to change the volume. It's actually a line. But you drag that down, and it changes the volume. We did that in the previous lesson. Let's talk about what else we can do here, though. Let's listen to it first. You ready? The quick brown fox jumped over the lazy dog's back. Who came up with a sentence that has all the letters in the English alphabet, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, is beyond me, but that's the sentence, okay? The quick brown fox jumped over the lazy dog's back. Let's look at some of the effects that we can apply here. Now, if you go to effects here, you want to go into advanced, well, mine says advanced, and you want to come down to audio effects. If you are using Windows, you actually have four more of these than I do. You've got things like pitch shift. What does it do? Well, it makes your voice sound like a cartoon character or it makes it sound real sinister. So if that's something you want, that's on the Windows side. Most of these are divided up primarily, actually, into things that are going to help us, but there are a few in here that can, I don't know, have a little bit of fun with. For example, you have one called High Pass. Now, what does High Pass do? High Pass removes a lot of the lower bass. And if I drag it on, and we come back over here again, now listen to it. The quick brown fox jumped over the lazy dog's back. What did it do? Well, it removed all the bass. To me, that's a special effect. It kind of makes it sound like it's coming out of a really cheap speaker in maybe a little tiny digital recorder. Now if we select it, and then we come over to Applied Effects, there it is, High Pass, you have an option for cutoff. That is where the cutoff is on the bass. And if we come over here and take it all the way down to here and play that again, the quick brown fox, pretty much normal. If we go ahead and reselect it and we take the cutoff really high, listen now. Well, I've cut everything out of it. So if you want to, it does remove like bass. And if that's something you need to clean up your audio, well, I guess you could use it for that. But for me, it's more of, let's make it sound like it's coming out of a telephone or it's coming out of a really cheap speaker. That's cut off. I'm going to go ahead and get rid of that one. And we're back to normal. Go back into effects. Now, we've got things like invert. We have a low pass that does the opposite, gets rid of the low stuff. Fill from left and fill from right, to me, are important. Now, look very carefully. This is stereo. There's left and right. Many times when you bring audio in, it's only going to have one. Um, you've got a microphone. You've got it plugged into your computer, whatever. It's a mono, not a stereo microphone. You only get one channel, but you really want it coming out of both in stereo. So let's assume all we have is this one. That's the left, that's the right. This would be blank down here. If that's what you see, then fill from left. You drag it on. It will fill from left and give you, technically, I suppose it's not really stereo, but it would be good enough. Fill from left fill from right. You've got things like audio polish. If you listen to the very end of mine, let me get right to the end before or actually after the words. Hear that kind of background? Let me do that again. I'd like to see if I could get rid of some of that. Maybe clean it up because maybe it's impacting how I sound too. So let's go back into this one and let's go back into effects. Actually, we didn't have to select it. I do that all the time. I don't know why. We have new blue filters, cleaner, hum remover, noise fader, audio polish. I think I'll try audio polish. Drag it down on top. In audio polish, besides the bypass, we have noise reduction, compression, brightness, and ambiance. Now, if I click this button right here, you've got default. I'm really trying to remove that noise. Ambiance flatten, overall improvement brighten. You got different options here. 
if I choose remove noise as my preset, that means these are basically set at their defaults. Let me make this a little bit smaller so we can see them all. If I leave it at default and try this again on the end, I don't hear anything. But let's hear my voice. Brown fox jumped over the lazy dog's back. Sounds like I'm in a room. Well, if we go back to it, that's ambience right here. If I open that up and, well, increase it. Brown fox jumped over the lazy dog's back. Hello, 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 hello. It creates this atmosphere of being in a bigger room. And sometimes I do want that, but I don't want that here. So I think what I'll do is, because I like the way it reduced here, if we open that up, let's get rid of ambiance altogether and see what happens. The quick brown fox jumped over the... Mm, it's a little bit tinny. Let's select it again. Come back here. Now that's probably a combination of brightness, maybe compression too. I'm going to take the brightness down. I'm not a bright person anyway. The quick brown fox jumped over the lazy dog's back. Better, better. The thing about using any of these effects, in my opinion, is that every audio is literally going to be a fingerprint. They're always going to be different. No two will be the same. So the control that you have here based on what you're doing would shift based on the audio you're applying it to. Makes sense, doesn't it? Let's take out a little bit of that compression. Take it to about there and see what that does. Quick brown fox jumped over the lazy dog's back. That's better, and we've removed that hum from the background. Now let's assume that we've been working on this audio for like 10 hours. I'm exaggerating, obviously. But we like what we did. We really got it good. We nailed that thing, and it sounds good. But you've got 57 other clips you're going to have to use that were based on this same premise of having that problem. Don't forget, we already talked about this, but don't forget I can right-click right here and tell the computer to save it as a preset. All I have to do then is drag it on and apply it to the other clips. Lots of effects here. Play around with them, learn how to use them, have some fun with them too. But the primary reason I use effects, for the most part, is to clean up my audio. Now we don't have to save this one, we didn't really do anything to it. And let's go ahead and move into the next lesson.